Hey, this is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. And if you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, Dennis Giannoutsis. He's prepared to ignite. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show. Leadership is changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level for finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world, and I want to welcome you to this week's episode of Ask Dennis, which is a freestyle episode. Every week I interview two guests And then once a week, I do the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode. The episode is really where I'm asked a question by our listeners around leadership and change. Or this is where I also share my thoughts, my insights, my experiences from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey team, I just want to welcome you here today to today's show. It's great to have you here with me. Month four has been completed already when the podcast was launched. And uh, this is episode 57 that's already come out. So we've had some great traction in the sense of interviews coming out, the Ask Dennis episodes going out, but also the number of downloads, ratings, uh, reviews, but also people sending me messages uh, from around the world on what they're getting from these podcasts, people sending me messages on social media, private messages and so forth. And it's just been really, really exciting to see these messages coming through. But lately, what I've noticed is that leaders are struggling. Now, when I say leaders, leaders can be a person who runs an organization, somebody who you know runs a, a team, uh, somebody who leads uh, or is an entrepreneur of their own business, one person or could be several people working in that business. But what I'm finding is I, I, I class them as leaders, but they are struggling at the moment. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I've noticed is that their motivation is lower than normal. People are starting to self-doubt themselves. Third thing is their attitude is not great. And so many people are facing obstacles. And there's all sorts of obstacles out there today. Of course, the big one for us is the pandemic that's hitting the world right now. And in this part of the world, we've gone and squashed that that curve with the pandemic. However, other things are, are, are resulting as a result of squashing it. Other countries, the numbers are just really escalating a lot, especially as countries are going into the winter seasons versus coming out of the going into the spring or summer seasons for others. And what we're finding is as a result of the pandemic, countries closing down, going hard to try and eliminate the COVID or the pandemic side of things. Businesses are struggling. Businesses are having to pivot, adapt, and move into the online world if they can. They're trying to be able to look at the business they're in and whether they need to adjust and move into other businesses. Uh, They're also looking at their organizations. Do they have the right organizations and the right leadership team around them to help deliver what they need to do? But as a result of businesses struggling, some of them are actually downsizing. As they adapt, they are downsizing the number of people. Some of them can't afford to keep some of their staff right now, so they're downsizing in that sense as well. But then there's other businesses that are taking off. There are other businesses who are really exploding right now, depending on what kind of industry, 
business service product offering that they have that they're providing their customers and so forth. Economies are being tested across the world, and you'll see that in various countries and the way that different countries are handling that. But as people are losing their jobs, they're finding it hard to go out and look for another role. For others who are in business themselves, who are struggling, who are trying to launch their businesses, or they are actually trying to keep their businesses, or they're wanting to scale their business, some of them are finding it hard to stay motivated. They they are self-doubting themselves, as I said before, and their attitude isn't great. In fact, I've had, I don't know how many people this week alone, where I've seen comments from them, I've reached out to them, or they've reached out to me, because what they're finding, they're struggling. And when I come down to it and I talk them through it, it's only a matter of time for them to actually step back and think about a few things and talk about things together that actually helps them move forward. So today, team, I want to share with you eight simple ways to supercharge your motivation every day. And that is what I want to talk about because, you see, if you try to do something great, you will encounter sometime, somewhere, obstacles. The more obstacles you encounter, the more difficult it is to keep your motivation at a high level. As I said before, the pandemic and so forth, it's very hard for some people to keep that those motivation levels high. For a lot of leaders that I'm working with, they well that I work with, or I haven't worked with yet, but what I'm seeing in the marketplace is that they are struggling. They are emotionally tired. Yes, they've had to be there for their teams as a rock, as a support, as people are going through the pandemic side of things. They're having to pivot, adapt, and so forth, but it's been emotionally tiring for them. But they've forgotten to look after themselves. And so today I want to share with you the eight simple ways to supercharge your motivation every day. Because it could be the eight things, or there could be one thing, there could be two or three things that I'm about to share with you that could be of uh, interest and it's actually going to help you lift your motivation every day. And team, I'm going to say to you as well that I'm actually going to provide this for you in a PDF document or a, a report for you that you can download and check out the show notes for this. And you see, in these moments, you need techniques to fuel your motivation engine that you have. And I'm going to go through these eight simple uh, side of things, uh, tips or areas whereby they can actually help you supercharge your motivation. So here we go. First one, focus on the things you can control. Now, that's an interesting one because I've talked about this in other episodes and I've talked about this in a lot of the Facebook lives, LinkedIn live, YouTube lives that I do. Focus on the things you can control. Because you see, there's lots of things that are happening for us in business and life and so forth that are out of our control. And you can't control it. You can't do anything about it. So many people focus on those areas. The more you focus on things out of that out of your control, the less motivated you'll feel. That's what these people are experiencing right now. But when you focus completely on the things you can control, you realize that you can quickly and easily change your situation. Imagine if you could feel like you're empowered or you've got the ability to change your situation. Every day, focus on the things that are right in front of you. That's what you should be focusing on. So don't waste your time and energy on things that are out of your control, team. Focus on the things that you can control. And I talk about the two things you definitely can control. Number one is your attitude. In other words, the way you react to things, the way you look at things, your mindset, the growth mindset. Number two is where you're going. And if you can focus on the two things, the attitude and where you're going, that's actually going to help your motivation. It's actually going to help you focus on the things that are right in front of you to allow you to get on with things. So don't waste your time or energy on things that are out of your control. Focus on things you can control. Number two, constantly remember your purpose. So why you are pursuing a goal or a dream in the first place? Why are you doing that? Why are you pursuing a goal or dream in the first place? What is the big audacious purpose that motivated you to embark on the journey? Is it more time with your family? Is it more money? 
Is it getting the dream job that you've been thinking about? In other words, you wanting to go to another level or into another bigger organization to a more to a role that's bigger where you're actually scaling to a different level? To keep your motivation high, constantly keep your purpose in front of you. This is the, the, the big one. This is one where I talk about the why. Why are you doing something? If you know your why, your motivation, and you consistently remember your purpose, that's what's going to really help you. Because at times, it's going to be hard for people to get up in the morning. For some parts of the world, they're going into winter. The days are shorter, colder. Do I, do I really want to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning? Do I really want to get up this you know, uh, early in the morning and go and do what I want to do? It's cold. It's hard. But those who actually know their why, their purpose, and they constantly remember that, they're the ones who are going to be out there to be able to do it. For others, it's going to get difficult. They are going to be those obstacles I talked about before in front of them. But if they consistently remember your purpose, then you're going to be able to focus on things as well. Number three, celebrate the small wins. I talked about this in an episode recently about celebrating your accomplishments. But it's important to keep the big picture in front of you. But it's also crucial to celebrate the small wins. Remember, you climb a ladder one rung at a time. So that's how we get up a ladder, right? So one step, one rung at a time. You're reaching your goal one step at a time. So it's the same analogy. Celebrating the small wins will allow you to see the progress that you're making and increase your motivation levels. For a lot of people, they are so busy, they're so focused on getting their goals, they don't take time out to celebrate the small wins. In fact, they don't even take time out to celebrate at all. I'm going to highly encourage you to celebrate the small wins because it's like you're ticking off something to know that you're actually stepping by, slowly step by step to getting to what you need to get, So, which is really important. Number four, act first, feel later. There's an interesting one. One of the best ways to get your motivational juices flowing is to simply take action. And I mean massive action, right? But do something, take action. If your goal is to read 50 books in a year, sit down and read a book for five minutes. What you'll notice is that things will start to happen from there. If your goal is to lose 50 pounds, 50 kilos, if that's how many you need to lose, then go for a 10-minute walk. I'm not saying that if you go for a 10-minute walk, you're going to lose 50 pounds straight away. No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying here is that if you take some action towards something, then it's amazing what happens. Because you see, it's common for motivation to follow action. Once you take the first step, you'll feel motivated and that you want to keep going. The problem for a lot of people is they don't take the first step. Why? Because that's a bit of a hurdle for them to get over. Now, if you can take the first step, get some action, just small steps, just do some small, a small walk, then next minute you're doing 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and it's, on, and it's underway. So number four, act first, feel later. Number five, do visualization exercises. Now, by visualizing your goal, you'll bring the future into the present. Now, a lot of high-performing athletes and teams and that do this. A lot of high-performing entrepreneurs and leaders, they do this too. By visualizing their goal, they bring the future into the present. So as you visualize visualize the, uh, your dream job and all the benefits that it will bring, you'll feel, feel the present motivation skyrocketing. And as you think about what it's like to double your income, the obstacles you're facing will melt in the background. So if you start thinking about it and visualizing that you're there and that you're doing it, that's actually going to help move a lot of the obstacles that they become insignificant for you as you move forward. So number five, do the visualization exercises. Number six, Break your big goal into smaller goals. So depending on your ability to focus, it might be necessary to actually break up the goal into segments that last anywhere from maybe one week to 12 weeks. This way, your brain can experience success and and logically see a positive long-term outcome. What will happen if you don't is that you run the risk of procrastinating if the path looks too challenging for you. And so the important thing here is that you actually break the goals into smaller pieces. 
I don't know if you've ever heard of this terminology, how can you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. All right. And um, the thing here is that what they're saying is that how can you attack one big goal, one hairy, audacious goal? How can you actually attack it? Well, you take it one bite, one, one step at a time or one bite at a time. That's what we talk about, right? So that's how you can actually break your goal into smaller goals. Then you'll actually get motivation as you're ticking things off or achieving things as you're moving forward, uh, forward, I should say. So number six is break your goal into smaller goals. Number seven, repeat affirmations daily. See, affirmations will help you believe that you're going to achieve your goal. And when you're feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, or low on motivation, saying things like, I am on my way to a healthy body, that's going to help you keep going. Now, the key words were, I am which means you're actually doing it. I am. It means you're going to ha- make it happen. I am I am on my way to a healthy body, if that's something you want to achieve, right? So you can replace a healthy body with other words. So number seven, repeat affirmations daily. Number eight, surround yourself with people who motivate you. And other episodes to talk about having people around you who's the right inner circle. See, one of the most effective ways to boost your motivation is to surround yourself with other people who are motivated because it rubs off on you as well, right? So if you're building a business, then spend time with other passionate entrepreneurs. If you're working towards a a weight goal or you want to then join a, a weight loss program or support group, you need encouragement and support as you pursue your goals because what's really important is If you're around people like that, they're like-minded. And if you've got around like-minded people, that's what's going to help you. Because A, they're probably feeling what you're going through. B, they've actually been through what you've gone through. And C, they'll be one of your biggest supporters because you're all on the same page or on the same path, journey together going forward. So number eight is you surround yourself with people who motivate you. It's really key, team. Motivate you. And hence, that's why I think a lot of people are contacting me lately, because I'm being able to motivate them and help them. And it doesn't take long, but you know what? It's really important to them. And I think that's what it means to be a leader today. A leader, we for a lot of leaders, we don't actually understand the power we have in our hands. And I don't mean it from a power trip side of things. I don't, I'm not talking about that at all. What I'm talking about is the fact that what we say, how we say it, the words we use, the actions that we do, people are watching us all the time. But they're very impactful for people. And so for some people, so impactful that it can change their lives. It can change organizations. It can change the way an industry is going or a market, uh, a business market is going based on what we say and do as leaders. And so as a leader, if you can motivate people, that'd be wonderful. I saw a quote one day that talked about the fact that, you know, you're not there to hire people to motivate them. You're there to motivate people, hire motivated people and inspire them. That's what we do, team. That's what we should be doing as leaders is to inspire people who are already motivated. Yes, at times they're going to be not motivated and they're going to struggle. And that's what we need to do to help them. You see, these ideas that I've just shared with you, the eight of them, they're simple but they are profound. If you can put these to work in your own life, then you should see some success starting to appear in front of you. Even if you put one, two of these items in front of you and actually help you, you never know where it's going to go. There's a great quote out there today that I've seen that's from Zig Ziglar, who used to be a fantastic motivational speaker and teacher. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. So there's no free ride is another way of saying it. There's no easy path to do it. You have to take the steps to be able to go and be successful in whatever you're wanting to do. Hey team, if you're wanting any help around what I've just said about your motivation and helping you get what you want to go and go ahead and do, whatever goals you might have, whatever business you might have, uh, leadership role and all that, if you want to go and do a dream job or you're looking at starting a business and doing things, I've got a few coaching spots available for people right now. 
If that's of interest to you, feel free to reach out to me. If you want me to come and work with your team around some facilitation, some work around where they're going and what they're doing and how to lead change, but also how they should be leading and and working virtually nowadays because they're under a lot more pressure, feel free to reach out to me. The other thing I want to remind everyone is that there's the Facebook group, right, which is the Leadership is Changing community. Uh, There is a Facebook group that you can go and join and feel free to go and do that now. Team, if you're already interested in what we've, I've just shared with you, these eight simple steps around supercharging your motivation every day, then check out in the show notes the link that you'll be able to go to and download the report that's available for you, uh, which I'll make that available for you. Listeners, I just want to thank you for joining me on the show today. You know, it's really important that uh, if you're if you are finding that your motivation is a little bit lower, then check out this report that I'm actually going to be able to share with you that's actually going to help you supercharge your motivation every day. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. And change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Listeners, uh, look out for the episodes as they're being released. Download them, listen to them, put a review and a rating. And feel free to share them with your family, your network, your friends. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show, or if there's a question you want to ask me to to, to ask my guests that I interview twice a week, or if there's a question that you want to ask me for the Ask Dennis episodes, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. And I'll actually put that, that in the show notes as well. Hey team, it's awesome to have you with me today. Thanks for joining me and uh, look forward to catching up very soon and uh, have an awesome time ahead. We'll talk again soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 